Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 24th of April and we're going to do a massive update on the stock markets today. So there's not been many times in history where we've been faced with this dilemma of whether we're going to see the biggest crash in history or are we going to see a continuation of this move to the upside where this bubble of a stock market continues to rise. And as we all know, when you see these exponential moves, you can expect the move up towards the end to be even more aggressive. So that's what we're faced with, a dilemma of whether we're going to see a really aggressive move up higher or are we going to see a massive crash to this big stock market bubble right here, right now. These are the arguments that we're going to discuss in today's video, largely looking at the technical analysis to make sense of it all. So if interested, stay tuned. guys so it's been a while since we covered the stock market so here we've got the Dow and um, yeah let's stick the log chart on so obviously we can see on the linear scale that it's been very much a bubble on the log scale looks a lot more regular this uh, steady gradient of an incline here and um, just to give you an update on the last time I really covered the stock markets I think it was about it was eight months ago if we go through my videos it was this video here and I put a warning out, you know, the stock market was looking very bearish. And we talked about this expanding triangle play out. So this was eight months ago. And this did in fact play out. Admittedly, I was a little bit premature calling the end of the D wave of the expanded triangle. But ultimately, this is the play out that happened. And we are now seeing this move up, although we're yet to see if it is going to pump higher. But what I'm trying to point out is from a technical technical analysis point of view, this is this is a very very bullish argument at this moment in time. So, just zooming in, let's just before we look on the monthly chart, looking way way back, let's just home in on this on the weekly time frame. And basically, I was looking at this as an A B C D E, which is what played out. Although that video eight months ago was calling the end of D here. Yeah, that's where I thought it was going to roll over. I anticipated an A, B, C, D, E coming down and then we pump higher. All right. Obviously, it's not played out that way. It's made this more expanded D and an even more expanded E wave as a result. So now let's just zoom out. Yeah, point I'm just trying to make is this could very easily be just a wave for part of a bullish pattern with a continuation to the upside. Now let's zoom out, let's go on the monthly, really zoom out here. And first thing I want to show is, so from our 2009, uh, sorry, 1929 depression, we've had this uptrend. And let's just pull up, first of all, the Elliott wave count that we have to really consider here. So what I've got is this initial wave one and two, three up until our early 1960s where we then go into our stagflationary period call it that our wave four and then we go into this extended wave five starting with an initial one two three then we get our termination of our dot-com bubble followed by our financial crisis to complete our uh, wave four flat and then we've gone into this terminal wave five and the uh, there's two different counts one argues that the wave five has finished here and the other one is that this is just a wave four of this final leg up and it's got another final very exponential move higher okay and to be honest i don't think ta can call it there's two different arguments to how it can play out all right if you're using ta alone in my opinion there's a very good chance of another higher move up here all right but that seems to be going a little bit against the fundamentals at play right now which is where we've got uh, we're on the border of a, a serious recession due to lockdowns across the, the globe, essentially. Um, but yeah, this is the long term count, the one, two, three, four, five. And then very importantly, we have, let me just find it, the pitchfork. So this pitchfork just held price beautifully since the beginning, since 
uh, our post depression, we've got our first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, it's a shift pitchfork. And you can see it was really on our dot com bubble that we tagged the upper warning line very nicely. We then get our uh, financial crisis taking us to the median line, allowing another huge move to the upside of which we've come up to the 1.5, but there's an argument that we could tag the upper warning line once more. So that is just really to illustrate the trend that we've been following, how it's very nicely followed this pitchfork to the upside. All right, now what we want to do is we want to zoom in and just home in on really post uh, financial crisis, so post 2008, focus on this move up here. So if we take a look at that right now, um, so let's just take these off and then let's home in on the weekly time frame and let's take off Elliott wave counts. All right, so yeah, let's just look at this post 2008 recession coming up here. So we've got initially that pitchfork here, and you can see this pitchfork is just about holding on to price. Yes, we saw this big downward move out of it, but we we're actually quite nicely back within the upward pitchfork here. Um, and then we've got the Elliott wave count. So there's two Elliott wave counts, as I say. There's this argument that the five has finished here. So we've got the wave one running flat two into our three or four, and then this is our fifth wave termination. The problem with this is the subwave count of this, you would call this a wave one, two, three, four, and then the fifth does not look five wave-ish in nature. Admittedly, it's very, very, very difficult to call that a five wave count. But at the same time, you can get truncations and you can get black swan events, which may cause, you know, it may completely distort the Elliott wave count. Yeah, so Elliott wave is not the only thing that drives these markets. Of course, it's a very good indicator, but when a black swan event comes along, you've got to be prepared to let go of, you know, some of your key analytical tools to some extent, because you've got to admit that they're not always going to be right 100% of the time. So there is the argument that there is a termination here using this count, the one, two, three, four, five. And this is the count that you'd be using if you're anticipating this huge downward move, basically calling the termination of a wave five following our 1929 depression, which basically means we've got a huge, huge way to come down. All right. Now, the alternative argument is this count, which is that we've got a wave one running flat wave two, the third finished here. This is an expanding triangle megaphone pattern, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going into a fifth. Okay. Now I do want to show you on the NASDAQ, this, this pitchfork coming up has actually held price a lot better. Uh, if we just pull up the NASDAQ one moment. And let's just pull up the major pitchfork, which is this one. So this is the pitchfork that I've been following for the NASDAQ. And you can see how beautifully is held price coming up here. And we basically tagged the lower warning line and we've gone higher. All right. The other bit of support that we had here on the weekly time frame, if we pull up the moving averages. So we had the two, this is the black line. This is the 200 week moving average, beautifully held price up here. And you can see where we are at present. We're tagging the median line. OK, so just taking moving averages off. We're at the median line and we'll have to see now, are we going to get past this? So this clearly is going to act to some degree of resistance. So <clears throat> just going back to the Dow point I'm trying to make is um, from a long term point of view, um, there's the we're very close to deciding whether we are going to go into a, an explosive move to the upside. And when I say explosive, it's going to be huge. It's not just going to be a very a slight staggered move up. It has to be explosive. It's part of this parabolic move that has been going on since 1929. And um, yeah, so it's, it's either going to be a massive move up or we're going to see a huge crash. And yeah, that's the dilemma we're faced with. And the reason is we're faced with two th situations. Well, I can't say we haven't faced it before because we've faced pandemics before, uh, but we've never seen a response such as this, this QE stimulus, which is absolutely humongous. The numbers are absolutely crazy. And it's essentially putting 
the uh, the economy on life support is holding the businesses together right now but the question is can it do it for long enough that is really the question and that is what we're about to find out because if this is this is our initial move down and this is just a, a dead cat bounce well it can't come up too much higher to be honest because obviously if it comes up any higher it's going to start looking very impulsive suggesting that we take out all-time highs at which point it'll be very clear that we're going into an explosive move to the upside so <clears throat> yeah these are the, the major things that i'm looking at at this moment so yeah if we really just zoom in and focus on this shorter piece of price action now so if we go in on the daily main things i'm looking for so here on the dow so if we bring on our uh, fib retracement so from top to bottom we've hit the 50 all right we've hit the 50 and we've got a three wave move up okay so there's every reason for it to come down now so there's every reason we've hit the 50 and we've got this three wave ish move up okay if we look at it on a from a fib extension point of view so that's our first wave extended from the bottom of our second wave here we've hit the 0.786 and yeah certainly could come up a little bit higher we could come up and tag the 0.618 retracement which is at our one-to-one -one relationship with the fibonacci extension here so that's one thing to look out for so that's just looking at it look, uh, using the dow all right now if we go on the nasdaq we've obviously come up a lot higher okay again if we just pull up our fib retracement tool uh which I haven't got that saved so let's just plot it on so here you can see we've come up a lot higher this has really been pumped here and the question is how much higher can it go as i say we're tagging the median line which is going to add to some degree of resistance here and i was anticipating this range here acting as resistance and we're very very close to the top of that range so i was actually calling nine thousand. that was my major cutoff for you know, if we went above 9,000, I'd be switching bullish. Uh, whilst whilst we're below it, there's every chance that this bearish move um, maintains itself. So, yeah, this is the... So, from a FIB retracement point of view, we're just above the 0.618. Could very easily tag the 0.786 at 9,090. Um, and then the smaller pitchfork that I've got my eyes on right now and this is what I think is most significant at this moment. Because if we drop beneath this lower median line soon, then in my opinion, this is just an A, B, C that's come up. And then as soon as we come under here, that is a sign that this is a very weak market. Why? Because it's not been under the lower median line during this move up. Uh, so if it is an A, B, C, how far is uh, the C in relation to A? So if this is A, then we get our regular flat B extend that we have come up and tagged the 1.236 so yes we could come up to the 1.382 which is in keeping with the 0.786 fib retracement i'd expect it only to really be a wick up to here and then the close in within this range here yeah this range that was created that's what i would expect so if it does make another push up which it looks like it will because this only came down in what looks like a three wavish move suggesting that it's a corrective move and we're going to see another higher high materializing now i see this it can't really go on much later than uh next week yeah i i anticipate if this market's going to crash it needs to do it next week and if it fails in my opinion the bulls have got control of this market all right so these are the key things i'm looking at so i think if nasdaq pushes higher you know goes on towards 1.618 you're then looking at this as maybe a one, two, three coming up if we get as high as the 1.618, and that's at 9,400. But as I say, I, I'm anticipating 1.382, maybe to get tagged with a with a wick, and then you get a, a closing body of the candle on the, the higher time frame, let's say daily, weekly, back within this range here, sub 9,000. Yeah, that's what I expect if this this is in fact just a dead cat bounce and we're rolling over all right uh, and if we don't see it as i say i'll be looking at it from a bullish point of view so the other markets to look at on this shorter time frame i've been looking at the the e-minis for the s p and again 
So here we've tagged the 0.618 very nicely. There's a very good argument for it to roll over. Again, it's come down in a corrective manner and looks like it wants to make another higher high. Um, and if we just pull up the uh, current pitchfork, so again, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, shift pitchfork. Again, we're tagging the lower median line, using it as support. And yeah, we could just come up, maybe tag our median line once more uh, and then roll over. But again, if we do our Fib extension tool from the bottom and extend it to the top here, we've hit the one-to-one -one relationship very nicely at this point here. So the next target would be a 1.236 at around 3000. Uh, and that kind of fits very nicely in the middle of this range here. Yeah. So these are the main things that I'm looking out for to determine, are we seeing the termination of a dead cap bounce or are we going to see this as the end of our wave four and we're going to see this really aggressive move to the upside so that's really what i want to highlight as i say main thing i'm looking at right now is this shorter time frame pitchfork to determine are we seeing strong sentiment in this market or are we going to make a little further move up and then take us beneath this lower median line in which case the market would be looking weak but if that's going to happen in my opinion it needs to happen next week all right we get our monthly close Friday next week and I expect that monthly close to you know fail to get above these key levels so fail to get above 3000 on S&P because if it's getting higher than that that is a good show of strength so these are the main things to look out for and I think basically we're going to find out imminently and I'm talking about end of next week whether we're going to see you know crazy new highs i'm not going to put out a target in this video because we can save that for another video if we are going to see a very bullish move in the stock markets so let's just take another look at the dow if we go on the monthly time frame you know we can see potentially price pushing up a lot higher here if it does turn out to be bullish um we just pull up our pitchfork so as i say we could easily tag our upper warning line yeah with a, our final wave up yeah and we could get in excess of forty thousand. so as i say i'm not going to put a target just yet but just going on the linear scale just look at this how it's been so aggressively going up yeah it could be an absolutely huge move up and you can see how we've tested this range here with this low so another reason for support here on the Dow, but it obviously it would be defying all fundamentals. We can see, you know, very high levels of unemployment and, um, and the fact that we don't even know when we're going to be able to return to normal with regards to these lockdowns and how we're going to start fueling the economy again. But somehow, despite all this negative media, we have seen, right, uh, you know, this bounce in price. Yeah, and the question is, with better news, as better news comes out, is that going to allow price to push even higher? Yeah, what happens when they do discover a vaccine? What happens when they do find out the treatment? Um, so that can only be positive, knowing the outcome of that. But yeah, who knows? We're going to find out very, very soon because at the moment you can very easily argue that this has been an aggressive downward move and this is still looking very corrective. And if this terminates its correction next week, then this could easily come plummeting down, plummeting down. So in terms of targets, the downside upside, I'm leaving that out of this video. We've already addressed enough. This is really about talking about where the pivotal levels are. As I say, the end of next week, the monthly close for me, that is very significant uh, because if we push any higher, it looks like the bulls are taking control. So I think we'll wrap it up there. I think I've said everything I want to say in this video. And yeah, if you found value in today's video, leave a like and any queries, as always, stick them down in the comments down below. And yeah, we'll be keeping you guys updated. So take it easy, guys. All right. Bye.